This GN special report looks at years of sales data from which CPUs our viewers and readers have purchased. The focus is our audience, and so we're looking at Intel versus AMD sales volume and, to some extent, market share in the enthusiast segment of GN content consumers. Our data looks at average selling price, or ASP, of CPUs, the most popular CPU models from each vendor and change over a 3.5 year period, and the overall sales volume between Intel and AMD across fourth quarter 2016 all the way through first quarter of 2019, ending in March. Before that, this video is brought to you by MassDrop's Vast 35-inch Curved Gaming Monitor. The Vast 35 is a 3440x1440 ultra-wide display with 100Hz refresh and FreeSync compatibility. More games than ever have ultra-wide resolution support, and at 35 inches, this monitor minimizes the space used on the desk while maximizing the available screen space. The Vast 35 uses an aluminum bezel for a professional, clean look and can be easily adjusted vertically, rotated, or tilted on the stand. Learn more at the link in the description below. AMD has undoubtedly gained market share over the last two years, and multiple factors have aligned for AMD here. So really a mixture of skill and luck with this one. Obviously, the Zen architecture launch was a huge deal for AMD. It put them back on the map with a CPU architecture that's genuinely pretty good, and also, uh, some misfortune for its competitor, Intel, which is dealing with issues like shortages of 14 nanometer supply, inability to hit targets with 10 nanometer, and then overall shifting its supply from the DIY enthusiast space to a lot more OEM and SIs as the company has struggled to keep up with demand. And these factors have all aligned to enable AMD to retake critical parts of the DIY enthusiast market, which our channel represents. So that's what we're looking at today. Any one of these things would have helped AMD coming back from FX, which was really just not successful, especially in the last few years of FX before Ryzen. But having all three aligned together does give AMD a, a huge boost. So in addition to all of this, Intel's own sales volume has been tilting. And in a way that the higher end processors are now the primary processors from our audience being purchased from Intel, where the i5 segment has basically died. It's been completely consumed by the R5 segment from AMD, a massive change because up until a couple of years ago, it was not uncommon, including from us, to see phrases like, an i5 is good enough for gaming, which was true. But now there are better things. Today, we're looking at affiliate sales from Newegg and Amazon over multiple years of operation, spanning both GamersNexus.net readers and our YouTube viewers. We need to set some ground rules here. So uh, first of all, this data represents our audience. You shouldn't take it and extrapolate it across the entire market. We don't really know what's being sold in the OEM or SI segments. We can postulate that it's mostly Intel because if you look at any of their systems, they are mostly Intel. And this is an issue AMD has discussed with us as recently as CES, where the company said that it is now trying to target OEMs and SIs to get more inclusion in those PCs. But either way, we can't get total absolute market share. We can get sort of a sales volume or market share shift of our enthusiast audience. So that's rule number one. That will skew the data because it's skewed towards what our viewers would buy. Second rule is that our reviews and our content will skew the data as well. So if we tend to favor a particular processor in reviews, that one is more likely to be purchased by our viewers. And our 2017-2018 best CPUs content would influence that as well. So when we said the R7-1700 was a good all-around choice, we said the 8700K was one of the best choices from, I think, two years ago now, that would influence the data. So keeping that in mind, we can get a cross-section of the enthusiast audience and get an idea of CPU buying trends. Our head-to-head -head data goes back to 2016 when we moved a lot of products through Newegg via GamersNexus.net, the website. The data set starts with Intel holding roughly 80% of monthly sales in October of 2016, with AMD at about 20%. The next several months looked bad for AMD, dipping roughly to 7% sales in December of that year. Nearly all units sold were going to Intel, and this was a period when AMD didn't yet have Ryzen. The company was surviving entirely on aged FX and APU products. 
Things started improving on February 22nd of 2017, which is when pre-orders opened for Ryzen 1000 series CPUs. AMD climbed back to 20% in February, then spiked hard to around 43% in March. The CPUs released on March 2nd, starting with the 1700, 1700X, and 1800X CPUs. AMD started dipping again after this initial excitement period eroded, and this was the closest that AMD had been in years to Intel levels of sales volume. Intel developed distance in June when its 7900X and i9 CPUs first hit the markets, regaining some of the market interest. Things changed again in August with the Threadripper 1950X launching on August 10th and the 1900X releasing end of month alongside Intel's i9-7980XE. The 7980XE wasn't enough to resist AMD's advances, though, and the two companies hit parity for the first time in GN's tracked sales history from our affiliate accounts with Amazon and Newegg. This dates back to 2011, so we hadn't seen parity or any, any instance where AMD outperformed Intel for several years, that was since, since 2010-2011. AMD and Intel both started moving an equal amount of CPUs at this point, and the R5 CPUs also were on the market, launching alongside the stranglehold that AMD would eventually begin to develop on the mid-range market, sort of pushing out the i5 CPUs. This is where it really becomes a war between the two companies. CPUs started launching faster than ever, with 2017 becoming our busiest year of CPU reviews in GN's history. Intel pulled in all of its launch dates for 2017, bringing the i9 HEDT CPUs to June, from an original end-of-year target, so a massive move there, and also rushing the i5 and i7-8000 series CPU launches by a full quarter. In fact, it was so rushed that only the Z390 motherboards were immediately available, and even those didn't have high quantities out. The CPUs were tough to find, and mainstream chipsets like the non-Z390 chipsets did not launch with the non-K CPUs, which made absolutely no sense and didn't gain any reviewer sentiment. This illustrated Intel's rush to get CPUs to market before the holiday, and it was a scramble that was enacted almost entirely because of the AMD moves that were made earlier in the year. The CPUs were planned, but the launch dates were not. Intel announced the 8000 series CPUs in September and launched them in October of 2017. Unfortunately for Intel, as Black Friday rolled around, the company got steamrolled in sales volume. Intel moved just under 40% of our total tracked sales volume, with AMD stretching past 60%. Ryzen 3 and 5 had launched in July, Threadripper in August, and R7 in March, so this was when the full product stack was on the market. We reported on several CPU and motherboard combo deals for AMD in November, but we did also post PC build guides for Intel and AMD systems alike. Intel also got recommendations and other content, so it's not like it went unmentioned in our coverage. Intel almost never has sales or discounts on its stock, even old stock. So AMD easily commanded this holiday season by lowering its prices or doing combo deals where Intel would not. November had very high sales volume for both companies, but AMD won out for November. Rolling the chart into 2018, last year started with rough parity, with AMD launching the APUs in January and February, and Intel launching its new chipsets. The next major release date was the 2700X in April of 2018. Up until this point, sales pushed higher for AMD, marked primarily by constant sales on the 1000 series Ryzen CPUs. The strategy of dumping old stock worked well. Because the motherboard socket is the same, users could reasonably be convinced to buy an older Ryzen CPU on sale, kinks now mostly worked out in BIOS, and then upgrade later. This allows AMD to develop a market for its new CPUs and fray the edges of Intel's market share, even if it has to drop prices in order to start gaining some of that foothold. June saw Intel pushing past AMD, where we saw a high volume of i7 sales, with the stock of i7s finally coming back to the market. The 9000 series helped Intel regain volume in September and October, but AMD again won Black Friday, and by a large margin. We first reported Intel's 14 nanometer shortage looming in July of 2018, where we had some initial hardware news coverage of it, and by November, this was a widespread issue. Into 2019, Intel's CPU supply has tilted heavily to system integrators and OEMs, allowing the DIY market to partly dry up and allowing prices to rise. Finally, in March of 2019, the chart flipped to the inverse of the beginning of the chart, with high combined sales volume between the two, AMD held over 80% of total sales to our viewers in March. AMD now firmly leads Intel in our chart here, although average selling price helps Intel maintain similar total revenue through our viewer and reader purchases.
The next metric to consider is the average selling price. Despite a dip in sales that has allowed AMD to post more units moved per month in some instances, Intel has managed to keep relatively close in total revenue generated with fewer sales to the DIY segment in our audience. In 2016, our viewers typically bought Intel CPUs averaging $256 spend with the rarer AMD purchases sticking closer to $104 average. Most of these were FX CPUs that were getting dumped and hitting the bargain bit. 2017 saw ASP increase to $278 for Intel CPUs among our audience, with more users trending toward i7 SKUs, but still a lot buying i5s. AMD's ASP jumped to $273 with the launch of Ryzen, particularly because of the more expensive R7 series. 2018 saw AMD holding steady at around $270 ASP, with Intel massively jumping, even with the large data sets we're now looking at in these later years, all the way to $371 ASP. This isn't just from gradual price increases as new CPUs have come out, but also because Intel purchases have trended away from the Core i5, which was popular in 2016, and toward the i7 instead. That's because AMD is beginning at this point to grab more of the i5 market with its R5 CPUs, something that we recommended heavily when we reviewed the R5s, and thus forcing Intel's ASP up as more users are either going for an R5 or an i7, or maybe an i9. 2019 to date has Intel trending at $410 ASP with AMD users thus far at $212 for the average selling price. This is a result of continual shortages for Intel and increasing popularity of the 9900K while AMD has dropped from the still ongoing sales of Ryzen CPUs. CPU series choices have also shifted over the years. For the last quarter of 2016, the i5 CPUs did notably well, combining with the i7s to make up nearly all sales for Intel in fourth quarter of 2016. This was the 6600K era, which is back when both i5s and i7 CPUs were four core solutions. This is also when most of us were saying, quote, an i5 is enough for gaming. So it makes sense to see this split. 2017 changed that to lean more heavily toward the i7, aligning with the 7700K. The i5 remained popular, and the Pentium series gained popularity in the low-end market by undercutting some of AMD's solutions. Where we really saw the shift was in 2018, where processor shortages and shifting focus to the high end resulted in the creation of a new market in the i9 segment, particularly with the 9900K. 2019 further solidifies the reduction in i5 sales as i9 moved to take the place of i5 and i7 CPUs in popularity. Again, this is for a few reasons. One is the CPU shortage and Intel's shifting of processor inventory toward system integrators, but the larger change is that AMD has taken most media recommendations for the mid-range market. At GN, we typically recommend an R5 over an i5 in most use cases, and we're not alone. If people buy Intel, it's trending toward higher end, more expensive parts by the company, whereas AMD has a wider spread across mid-range part selection. Moving on to the AMD chart now. The AMD chart shows the limited selection in 2016, where we primarily reviewed the APUs that AMD had that year and whatever FX CPUs were left. So it makes sense to see that A10 purchases were high. That's mostly what we were covering. Most of the visitors landing on AMD CPU reviews on our site were reading about the APU performance, and so we're more likely to purchase something like an A10. Either way, it's not like much else was available outside of FX or APUs. In 2017, we saw the split most heavily favor the R7 CPUs at over 40% AMD total sales volume, with the R5 ranked the next highest at over 30%. The R3 held about 11-12% to 12 sales volume, with Threadripper making up about 8% of sales volume for AMD. FX had a surprisingly high distribution in 2017, but was on the way out. This distribution of R7 to R5 is fairly healthy, and across the entire stack, we get a predictable scatter of samples for AMD. AMD did well to push more units at its high end, and this continued into 2018, except that the R5 captured more sales from the R7 CPUs and the dying FX CPUs. The R3 CPUs trended down as they became more focused on Raven Ridge, and Threadripper posted stronger numbers from another release and constant sales of the 1950X and 1920X. 2019 has shown a more even split between the R5 and R7, pulling market share away from Intel's i5 segment. AMD is really picking up steam here, finally. Intel needs to get more CPUs out the door. First of all, it needs to fix its shortage issues. Secondly, Intel needs to strengthen its offerings in the mid-range market because right now an i5 is just it's really not compelling in almost all cases the r5 is typically cheaper you get something like a 2600 2600x maybe 
It does well in a lot of applications, does better in things like Blender on average than Intel. It's competitive enough in games that for the R5, it's more justifiable to sacrifice a little bit of potential single thread performance for the balance that you get. Whereas an R7, there's fiercer competition with the i7s, the i9s. And so Intel to really regain that market segment at once held dominantly the i5 segment, it has to release a more convincing offering. And it's an interesting strategic play where AMD is uh, constantly putting its CPUs on sale. So even if there's lower margin, AMD is doing well to capture more market. And in a world where up until recently, AMD was just simply not trusted to make a CPU, it's important to make sacrifices like margin to just try and bring more people on and get them accustomed to the new Ryzen processors and try to convince people that, look, this thing actually works. We're serious this time. This isn't another bulldozer product. So it's it's good strategy from AMD. And it's allowed AMD to, to really start shifting that sales volume chart. So the longer Intel sacrifices its, its mid-range market and the mainstream market uh, for gamers, the lower the sales volume will be overall. Because i7, i9, although Intel is doing well there, ASP is trending up for them it's also not high volume, or at least not as high volume. So what we're left with is Intel's average selling price is going up, but that's not just because some of the prices have gone up, like the, uh, the 9900K, which is clearly more expensive than previous flagships. It's primarily because fewer people are buying lower end CPUs from Intel. Pentiums, for example, used to be fairly popular. And the G3568, 35, whatever it was called, the G4560, those CPUs, uh, 5600, those were fairly convincing CPUs. And in a world where Intel's got constant shortage issues, they're not really being made anymore. The 5600, the 4560, they were often 80 to $90. And so no one bought them. But when they're supposed to be $60, they're pretty compelling. So this is Intel's conundrum right now. And AMD has seen higher volume uh, overall moving to our viewers and readers in the first quarter of 2019. So uh, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. If you want to support efforts like this, you can subscribe to us to catch more videos, or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick something up, like one of our black and blue mouse pads, or white and blue if you prefer, or our GN Cobalt Blue beer glasses. Store.gamersnexus.net for that, or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.